every election we have a proliferation of parties. That's not a bad thing. That's quite a good thing in a democracy. I presume the people who start those parties believe that none of the existing parties are good enough for them, so they start their own party. We've had, for example, the UDM before 1999, that went nowhere. We had the ID before 2004. We had COPE before 2009. We've now got a Khan and the EFF. Why don't these parties last? Because they lack, and I think I know why you asked this question, they lack what you and the ANC have, which is structure. My, my thesis at the moment is that if Julius Malema is not at a meeting, the economic freedom fighters don't meet, because he's the person who holds it together. If Helen Zimmer is not at a meeting, the meeting will still happen. The same, of course, for President Jacob Zuma. It's about structure. It's about people who, will, who, who rise to be leaders in their own communities that are part of the party. So the Democratic Alliance and the ANC both have provincial leadership structures. The meetings still happen even if the provincial leaders aren't there. It goes all the way down. And that's really the difference, I think, between the ANC, the DA, and everyone else. The other thing is that the smaller a political party often the bigger the ego of its leader. Um, because it's difficult to manage people. And it's difficult to manage politically active people because by their nature, they also have an ego. So if you start a small thing, often there's a little bit of an ego at work. And uh, you know, Bancho Holomisa wasn't invited for a reason. I think it'd be easy to argue that Julius Malema <clears throat> has an ego. Um, and so often you see that, and that can be killing because they won't work with people who disagree with them. And that means they just don't get off the ground. The structure never happens. Well, we've gone straight for the very heavy politics, but I'd like to start also with things in this book that are different, that make it a great read. When I write, I always have my mother in mind. She is an interested, informed person who has to have things explained to her quite carefully. So that's how I write. And I've got a reader in mind I think of my mom. Who do you think of? Um, I, I think of someone who, and, and certainly for this book, who has not been interested in politics before. And one of the things I've always tried to do is to keep politics interesting. Mm. And sometimes that leads to the criticism, because one of the ways that you can keep politics interesting is to personalize it. I see politics as being about people. I, I also see it as an art rather than a science, um, which, which some people might disagree with. And one of the ways you can do that is that politics is a soap opera. And we know this because millions of people around the world watch the American elections when they don't live there. And they watch it because it's good television. And it's good drama. And the same happens with politics. You can do that here as well. Now, I'm interested in your predictions on the EFF mm. and the newcomers to our politics. Can you please just say why? And I'm not going to say what you predicted for the EFF. I want you to tell this audience. Or and, uh, and explain why you think so and compare that with your analysis of Aham. Um, the reason I say that the economic freedom fighters, in my view, will get less than 1% is because it really only has Julius Malema. Um, there's not necessarily certainty that he won't be in jail by the time the elections come. Oh, then he'll get 10%. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's also about structure. So you hear a lot of noise from Julius Malema, and there's, there's no doubting that he knows a good political opportunity, he gives a good soundbite, he gets lots of media attention. But he doesn't have organization. He doesn't have the ability to actually set up a branch and come back the next day and find that there's still a leader of that branch. He doesn't have that. And I know a lot of people worry about Julius Malema and you know, the comparisons to Adolf Hitler and that sort of thing, and people say, oh, but you know, Adolf Hitler was like that at one point. But, you know, when you are running a party like that, someone, if you're going to have, if you're, if you're going to run a party, you need to actually organize. You need to make sure that the 15 million rand bill is paid. And Julius Malema started with an ANC Youth League that wasn't in great shape organizationally, He'd taken it over from Fakile and Belula. Um And he made it a lot worse. All of those structures have been, have had to be disbanded because he hollowed it out. And so, if that's what happens with a party, that, with an organization that at least had some functioning, he's managed, he, he certainly won't be able to create something out of scratch, and that really matters in politics. And we've got the police on his tail, so he might run out of money at the same time. A Khan should have been different. I mean, I give it 3%, because you would think that Mampela Rampela, who you know better than I, um, would have been able to actually get something going. And I think, if there's probably one mistake in the prediction, it might be that I might give a khan a bit less just because 
it seems to be doing nothing at the moment. And, but then I sort of always worry that that's from a media point of view. You need to be very careful of not just judging people based on sort of what the media are saying, what the media are saying they do. Also. <laughs> <laughs>